Hi hey everyone. All right, so I have these pages that are <clears throat> intended to be in our journal, and I decided that I was going to go ahead and list it, even though it's obviously unfinished. And I had pulled this out of a different journal that I got rid of a while back, so I decided to make this the um, cover. So that's going to be the inside cover, and then I'm just going to paint the outside of it. So I thought I would record that. I don't know why. Um, and I'm going to end up waxing this one. And to give you an idea of what that means, let me show you my current journal. I just finished waxing this one um, last week. So uh, because I've waxed it, I have gone ahead and, and put um, a temporary cover over it just because the wax has a tendency to pick up paint and um, dirt and stuff. Um, oh, I taped that in pretty well, didn't I? All right, so that's the back of it, <laughs> and it's fully coated with a layer of beeswax, and it actually smells nice too. And then this is the front, which I showed a picture of, I think. I don't think I recorded painting it, but this is the front of it just to give you um, a quick look at what the waxed, um, you know, how it looks. It, it's just, it's just yummy. I just love wax. Um, okay, so anyway, that's just to give you an idea of what it looks like when you've waxed it. So to start off with, I just want to paint, um, just regular paint on this, and I know it's going to slip slide around, so I'm just going to create a couple of little tape bubbles to hold it in place while I'm doing that. This is probably the best use of washi tape. <laughs> um, I've spent a lot of money over the years on washi tape to have it all just go bad anyway. Uh, so I'm not a fan of washi tape. <laughs> all right, um, I have my favorite color right now, which is fluorescent red. I'm gonna put quite a lot of that out. And then I'm gonna stick with greens and blues for the rest of it. So I'm gonna put out a pop of this bright green and uh, I guess a kind of dull turquoise and then maybe a darker turquoise color. <clears throat> maybe. <laughs> if I can bang it down and get some of it out. There we go. And then I'm gonna also, oops, use white paint, which I didn't screw the lid on. Hmm, almost made a mess. Um, and I'm just gonna sit that over here and dip my brush into it periodically. So I'm gonna use a nice um, medium to small sized flat. And I've lost my paint rag, so let me get a new one, hang on. Right, I've now got a paint rag. I'm just gonna oop, wipe that off. It's clearly got color in it still. So that's a little better. It'll be enough. All right, so I'm gonna start out with the um, fluorescent red. I love this color. I so love this color. And I especially love this color when you add white into it. So I will do some of that. Isn't it just beautiful? <clears throat> uh, all right, so I'm gonna add some of the lighter turquoise color. It's a little bit more dull. And again, this is um, the, you know, the practice that um, I do when I have leftover paint. Uh, I just smear it around on a blank page or a separate piece of paper and use it up. So I'm gonna switch into the green now. And I love this green as just little pops of color that end up um, showing through when the page is fully painted. I'm gonna go back to my um, deep red without any added 
um, white to it. Again, another color that I really love seeing, um, you know, in its full spectrum as well as when I add other colors to it. And now I've just picked up this blue, but I haven't washed um, the brush out. So I'm gonna get a tone of these colors. Some snobby people <laughs> might say it is uh, muddy. So now I'm gonna actually actively mix the fluorescent into this color. Again, always using um, these same combination of colors and mixing them together it gives you a uh, really nice cohesive <clears throat> background to paint with. So I'm going to do the same thing now, but with the darker blue. I'm just going to take some of the darker blue and some of the fluorescent and mix them. And I should get yep, a more purpley version of that color. <clears throat> take the last of that and now I'm going to kind of look for areas that I want to break up and so I have a lot of, of this um, fluorescent in a few places so I'm just going to come in and, and intentionally kind of mess that whole um, concept up a bit then I'm going to rinse I'm going to take my bright green and I'm going to dip my brush into white and mix my bright green into my white. There's a little of that red, but not too much. And now I'm going to make this uh, a nice little accent to everything else going on and again use it to kind of break some areas up. <clears throat> and fill in any of the bright white that I haven't painted yet with it. And then I'm going to be painting a face on this and I'm pretty sure it's going to go right here. So I'm going to take what I have left of this and sort of get an area where I can um, concentrate painting the face. That's the last of what I had. So I'm gonna dip in just a little bit into white and just brighten some of that up. Okay, and then that is really um, all I'm gonna do uh, with uh, the green. I'm gonna rinse my brush now. Try to rinse it a little better <laughs> than I did before. And now I'm just gonna take some white into the large chunk of this fluorescent red and get a really vibrant mid um, color out of it. And now I'm just gonna kind of come in and just start getting rid of areas that I don't care for or that I kind of want to break up, letting this bright color sort of become the more dominant color here. And then I am going to add just a little bit of this over here. And I am going to try to break up a few of these areas where I it looks like I've just made sort of singular um, brush strokes. And then over here again, I'm just going to, kind of, it's almost like I'm doing cleanup. <laughs> uh, I spend too much, used to spend too much time with grandkids. Clean up, clean up. It's time to clean up. Um, I forget the words. <laughs> anyway, um, so I've just kind of toned this down a little bit. Uh, gotten, you know, pushed back a lot of the, I almost put that whole brush down into the white paint. Uh, and now I'm going to pick a particular, a single color to use to kind of accent, whoops, accent all of this. I'm going to go, uh, I don't like that color. I want... I have a nice salmon sort of color in here. So here we go, it's right here. So I'm gonna take this color and you're not gonna see it too much um, over here. So like for instance here, you you know, you know hardly can see it, 
but it will be really fun to use it over some of the other colors. And then just to kind of you know bring everything over, I am going to use it over here. At first, I'm just gonna outline some things. <clears throat> it's really nice uh, to use a color like this because it blends in so well that it sort of looks like it sometimes disappears. So in essence, it makes what I'm doing even look like maybe it's more complicated than what um, I, uh, you know, originally did, which can be fun. Okay, um, and then I think finally, I will make a few of these look like they're maybe leaves. We'll see how that turns out. It may just end up being marks that I've made. <clears throat> and then I'm just gonna run it straight through with no real purpose. Uh, I do need to wipe that off because I picked up a lot of paint on it. Okay, so I'm gonna let all of that dry. And while it's drying, I'm gonna try to come in with a pencil. Let's see. Um, let's do her nose here, so we'll make her face like so. I'm not doing any, um, <laughs> no, no measuring or, or guidelines or anything like that. I just want her to be really, um, characteristic of my kind of messy, um, fun, sort of uncomplicated <laughs> um, style or process. see what happens with the shape of that face. It's kind of wonky. Um, let's do something like that and then let's give her a bottom lip. Let's give her, uh, yeah, let's just give her big hair, period, and not worry about what else goes on there. Oops, I dug into the paper where right here where it's damp. All right, so I need to um, stop with the pencil. I'm just going to end up ruining the face. So I'm going to use, where is it? I have a peachy color here somewhere. Yeah, I've got a nice peachy color. I'm going to use that as my um, base color for the skin. And oh, this is a watercolor brush. <laughs> Don't ruin the watercolor brushes. Um, let's use this kind of worn out, beat up round here and I'm just going to come in and start trying to carve this face a little here. I think her face needs to come out a bit. On this side.
And I'm just going to leave this the rest of it um, abstract. Just going to follow that line that was originally there. And I'll leave the rest of it kind of abstract. Her mouth is off. <clears throat> A little better anyway. All right, so I'm going to take this color and I'm just going to add. A little of my um, fluorescent red into it. <clears throat> Maybe more than a little. <laughs> it's a little more than I wanted. This will go. This will be fine. And I'm going to use this as my darker shading color. I'm also going to use it as her bottom lip. And we'll give her some color in her cheeks here. Um, use it to shade under her face. Uh, oops. And under her nose, under her hairline. And I think that's pretty much about it for that color. Um, I'm going to take, I'm just going to add white directly to what I have left over because I have quite a bit of that little mix left over. So I'm just going to add white to it so that now I have an even lighter, brighter peachy color. And I'm going to add in highlights. brush is super overloaded with paint from because I mixed with it. Okay, I'm going to rinse that brush out. I'm going to get a really small detail brush and I'm going to pick up some of this bright highlight color that I've mixed and I'm going to put in the whites of her eyes. And I'm also editing as I go, which I don't know how clear that will be. We'll see. Um, I'm going to take that color out of the brush. I'm going to get a little bit more of that red. <clears throat> I'm going to pick this red up and try to build an upper lip. this to do nostrils. Again, editing as I go. I'm going to hit her upper lash line. And then I'm going to get the irises in. The 
these tiny little detail brushes. Probably not the best option, but it'll do. And then we'll get that little crease and we might as well a little something going on with these eyebrows. I'm going to add some of this as um, a bit of a dark down here. Again, this little brush is like not really meant for this. I'm going to switch to a thicker brush that has more tensile strength, which means it'll be able to spread the paint better um, because the bristles have a little tension in them. Again, still editing as I go. Okay. <clears throat> just going to add a little bit of shadows um, under the hairline here. And then a little bit of this just to sculpt the face a little bit. Oh, that's too much. Now I'm going to, still using the uh, fluorescent red, I'm going to get a darker red. Just bear with me while I find it. This is called Tuscan red. It's just like an Indian red. It's just like a nice deep red. And I'm just gonna mix a little bit of that into my fluorescent red just to get a, a darker color and I'll test it out till I am happy with it. I'm going to go back to that tiny little detail brush, take some of this dark I still feel like this eyeball needs to be there you go. Now it's all quite um, wet. This is um, ultimately like painting a la prima. I'm going to get more of the um, fluorescent color. I'm just going to build out the structure of the eye. And now I'm going to go straight into that dark red. So with little to none of the fluorescent in it. Go 
back to adding some of the fluorescent color <clears throat> oh, and apparently some of that bright pink. Again, I find myself shade, trying to shade with this little tiny detail brush. Um, okay, so I'm going to take this dark mix and add just a little bit of it into the eyebrows. And again, this is still the mix of the two colors. And then I'll go straight into the um, darker red and just put a few hints of the darker color out there. And then I'm gonna really um, drastically darken up this outer corner. tiny bit on the inner corner. Same thing with the lips, just a little bit on the outer corners. It just gives a little depth. I'm just going to use my finger to just shade that in a little bit. There we go. Um, and then finally, I'm just going to take my little detail brush, dip it into water, get a little bit of a slightly watered down mix, and just start playing a little bit with depth. I have to go quickly because it dries really fast when you add water to it. That'll just get covered up. All right, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to rinse. I'm going to go straight into bright white. I'm going to give both eyes a little bit of a highlight and a little bit of the super bright white into the white. Oops. And a whole lot of water because it, a little tiny drip rolled off the end of the brush. I didn't dry it properly. All right, so a little pop of white into each of them, a little pop of this super bright white here. I'm going to rinse that. And I'm now going to come in with um, the dark red and the um, what is left over anyway of the fluorescent. And I'm looking, I'm gonna use a um, short flat, I think. Yeah. Um, I am gonna have to put out just a little bit more of this fluorescent red. So I have enough. And I'm just going to paint her hair. I'm going to keep it nice and um, kind of messy.
to fix her face right there. I'll show you how. And then I'm just going to add a little bit more of the really dark red. And I'm going to build some darker areas. I taped this down. <laughs> So, oops, I just realized how much lower the hair is over here. Um, I taped this down so I can't move it around. Typically, I would move it around a bit. So if you do this quickly enough, the outer area will hopefully is still um, damp enough that you'll get, you'll be able to kind of blend. Um, if not, then you just go with it. <clears throat> I'm going to just fill it in a little, make it nice and dark. And I'm also going to use this as a little hint of top. I can't get it to slide. Not enough liquid. There we go. I'm actually going to bring it up, I think. There we go. Okay. So then up here, I'm just going to add a little water to my brush, move it around in that tiny little bit of color that's left, and I'm just going to, uh, I would almost say it's like blending, um, but it's also kind of like glazing. It's blending anything that's still damp, um, it's glazing over anything that's dry. All right, that done. I'm going to go back to my original base color, which was not a mix, which means I don't have to worry about uh, getting that you know right color exactly. I'm gonna find my smaller round, not the detail, just the smaller round. And I'm just gonna come in and fix some of my mistakes. <clears throat> Not that it's necessarily all mistakes. Some of it's just cleaning up. It's just clean up, clean up, clean up. No. <laughs> cleaning up my page, kind of like kids would clean up their rooms. Um, let's see. There's definitely some things I want to edit as well on the face itself. I like that little loop right there, so I'm going to keep it. Um, oops, I do want to take a little bit of this and just carve a teeny bit in to give her a hint of an upper eyelid. I'm going to rinse again. And I'm going to, let's see, I think I'll just use, um, I think I'm just actually just going to use a little of this face color and a little of this dark red that I used for the hair. <clears throat> there we go. Nice, almost neutral looking. Um, shadow type of color here.
mixing up just a little more. I have to keep adding water. It has to do with the temperature in the room, but it also has to do with this particular brush. Um, this brush does, doesn't, um, it, it's a just like a really super cheap, you know, you buy a whole pack for um, five bucks or something, and it doesn't um, move paint very well. It's a terrible paintbrush, in other words, which is fine. Actually, it used to be a better paintbrush. It's just been um, so extensively used over the years. It's just old. And I'm going to soften that with just using water. I'm not sure. Uh, I think I'm going to get some of the original um, fluorescent red. Just want to brighten this up a little bit. better. I don't know if any of this, yeah, a tiny bit of this is still damp. So I can steal a little bit of it because that's the original color that um, I used to create that brightness right there. And then I'll go straight into um, bright, bright white and need a finer brush though. I'm going to go to the little tiny detail brush, straight into the bright white and just create a little bit of highlights for her lips. Okay, and then whatever little bit of this darker color I can kind of get out of here. I need to make, whoops, too much water. <clears throat> that always happens when I don't properly wipe my brush off after, especially a little brush after I've dipped it down into the water jar. I'm just making a mess all the way around today. Now gotten white on her <laughs> lip. There we go. All right, and then I'm going to see if I can get just a little more of this dark red to mix up that's still on my palette. And
tinier amount. Water down even more just to create the hint of shading that I like in the eyes. There we go. Cool, cool. Okay, she is done. And then the thing that I typically do um, with any of my journals is I will just do Signed, sealed, and delivered. No. <laughs> um, I do need to before I even try to wax it. I am going to round the corners a little bit. Sometimes don't get it seated in there right. There we go. So it's wet still, so I can't really lay it down, but that'll be the cover. This will be what goes inside of it. So it'll be like this. And um, once it's completely uh, sealed, big chunk right there. Um, once it's completely um, sewn and everything, then I'll open it up halfway and I'll wax it. And the waxing process is really pretty simple. I just take beeswax, which I'll show you. This is my little hot pot. This is, um, that down in there is my beeswax. So I'll just turn my hot pot on, let it um, get all liquidy. And I just take an old um, paint scraper. I scrape some of it out. I try to um, distribute, you know, chunks of it all the way around it. Then I just take my heat gun and I move it around and, and until I get a nice um, coating. Uh, I'm not gonna videotape it. But if anyone wants to see that process, uh, I just think it's boring. But if you guys would want to see that process, obviously not on this journal, but on another um, journal or page, I would be happy to record that. Just let me know. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was interesting um, or you at least enjoyed it or maybe it inspired you to make a cover for your own journal.